Hello guys, bon dia, good morning. Uh, is it okay? Everybody can hear me back there? Okay, good. Well, my name is Mario. Uh, I, some of you uh, know me, some don't, but well, my name is Mario. <laughs> and it, this uh, talk is about our work with gambling protocols. More specifically, I will talk about the Kaleidoscope and Royale. They are two card games, uh, one for poker, one for more general ones. And I was talking to Peter about the layout of the, the main slide. Uh, this, by, by the way, this is work with uh, Bernard David and Raphael Dosley. They are over there. They are co-authors of the protocols. And this is, this is kind of a, uh, a rehearsal, actually, because uh, it's a good thing, it's a bad thing uh, for you guys is that uh, since uh, I will be presenting this, in, this in two, next week in Japan, so this is kind of the practice for the moral. That's why that explains the Japanese title. Uh, and also, that's the bad thing. We are guinea pigs of this presentation. But also, you, this is the chance to get the more raw content and eventually some mistake, but <laughs> I hope not. And the, so, so the presentation is Kaleidoscope and Royal Poker and General Card Games, Card Game Blockchain Protocols. In Japanese, it's Kaleidoscope to Royal Poker to Ipanteki na Card Game no Blockchain no Protocol. So this is the, the official name for the next week's presentation. And just explaining the logos, this is our research group, which we are related in Tokyo Tech, and this is the Tokyo Tech logo, and this, of course, is our logo. Okay, so let's get started. Uh, the roadmap for, of this talk, uh, I was asked if it will be highly technical. That's the dilemma that I was when well, I was writing it. So there, there will be a taste of some technicality, but I hope that you guys, by the end of this talk, just get a sense of what exactly is the scope of the Kaleidoscope and also the Royal with a little bit of crypto in it. So, but first, we'll talk about this, this area called uh, mental poker, uh, which started back in the early 80s, late 70s, I guess. So, in the last summit, last year, actually, we did a survey and a presentation on that, so I'll get back on that. Uh, then, it's, it's a long uh, area of research, I mean, like over 40 years. So, but we'll focus on, on the last uh, works. Uh, why it matters, why it is important, <clears throat> and more directly, why we are doing it. And then an overview of the two protocols, and kind of a crash course on poker, because after all, this was part of our research, we had to go to the rules of the poker and one is one kind of specifically. And then, so I'll, I'll review it so it makes sense why we did some stuff that we did. Then we go a little bit deeper in the Kaleidoscope protocol and then the Royal. Okay, so I hope you guys like it. Uh, I will try to make like a little bit technical but a little bit over an overview. And so just take a seat and relax. And please, uh, if you have any questions, I think that we have plenty of time. I think one hour, the, 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 the slice, the time slice. I don't, I don't plan to, to talk the whole time. So if you guys are curious about something, feel free to just ask. All right, so, so the mental poker history, as I said, it started in the early 80s by the RSA guys, Shamir, Edelman, and Rivest. I guess this is their original paper, or one of the earliest versions. You can see that the layout is not exactly what we see today. And it's a little bit funny. Uh, so this, this, this idea of uh, like 
usually the, 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 the proper way or the way people do it, like play cards physically in the same room, the same table. So the idea here is that what it's not possible, so people are far away of each other, how they would manage to do by, for example, playing over the phone. So this idea of uh, you not see your partner, your, your, the other people playing with you, how you're gonna do it, uh, for example, how you're gonna shovel cards and if nobody's looking at you or checking what you're doing. Uh, in, if you receive a cover card, how you're gonna do it to, to, to open it and, and you're distributing cards for someone else, the dealer, for example. How, how, you, how you manage to do it because you are playing alone over some like, long distance with someone else. So, and this is this, this kind of a, a challenging thing. Uh, and it captures some like, sub-protocols, some tools of how, how you're gonna do it. So that's why, that explains why people are taking a look on this and trying to, to, to do it for, since the 80s. And the early attempts, some of them uh, got some kind of like formalization, so what you need to do and collect some, some properties. For example, in the 86, Crepo tried to list some properties, what you need, what you don't need in order to succeed in this, these tasks. Uh, and it's, it's kind of a long list, but not, not that long, but it, it's, it was the first attempt, but it's not actually a formal definition in, in the modern sense of, of it. Uh, a little bit later, not so, a bit like early 2000, uh, some different like problems which were not considered. For example, if you're playing and, for example, you receive a card, a uh, hand of cards that is not good, and you just leave, what happened with the others who, who, who were playing? What happens to the game? So this is a kind of address, uh, this is kind of problem who, which was uh, addressed by Castella Roca. Uh, I think we have some problems in there. Uh, so in a sense, there's a lot, of, uh, uh, a lot of gaps in the security formalization of such protocols. So, and also efficiency problems. So there were some attempts in the beginning to try to get those like, early protocols and implement it, and there are some reports that the processing of the shuffling of the cards will take forever. So, so that's, that's where the problems that they were having back then. Uh, well, about this, uh, this history, less, as I said in the beginning, there was this survey we did in the last summit in Malta, and I believe there is a video on that uh, deep in the, our channel. So it's internal channel, so I guess you guys have access if you wanna uh, peek in, in the details of it in the list. So here's, here's the video. Okay, so that was uh, the, the really old papers on, about this area. And more recently, uh, the one that we are most uh, more focused uh, is about the, in this case, is uh, the, the problem that I mentioned that if a player just leave the game in the middle of the, 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 the playing what happened, there is this idea, it's not exactly about poker, it's about like protocols. Uh, Zimbowski introduced this idea of like penalties, which means basically that it does not directly address the problem of leaving it early, but it kind of uh, makes you not like very profitable to, 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 to just stop the execution of the protocol. And it, it proposed the idea of like uh, penalizing the players. So you basically you put someone in there. If if you if you stop it, you lose it. So that's the the main idea here. And. Now, a little bit more related to, to poker protocol is that we have this, this, this presentation on Asia Crypt last month, which uh, kind of have this, this both of them, both works introduce this idea of like moving funds. Uh, and the, 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 the one in Asia Crypt was, uh, has this, uh, suggestion of using it for poker, but also uh, it's not exactly, uh, there is some security issues there. And so these are the ones that we kind of focus more 
in our work. So just uh, recalling, the first one introduced this idea of like penalties, and those two works uh, below here, they 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 did have some uh, progress regarding implementation, but still they have they lack some kind of uh, strong security model. So they they there is when they 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 build a framework, but when it comes to the poker, for example, there is a little bit of of gaps in terms of formalization and, and, and security. So okay. So there are a lot of work on, on that, but w why uh, it matters, why it is important for us, because, for example, uh, now we have this starting appearing uh, uh, casinos online, for example, and it has been noticed that it's a huge market. And we, we start seeing this kind of articles in, in, in financial magazines, and I have one here in The Economist magazine, this is, I think it's from 2007, and describes this, this, this trend. And the, the problem is with this right now is that you have this like, institution, this company over the internet that you have to trust in order to play along. And this is something that we are trying to avoid. It would be nice if we could do it um, Without this, let, just relying on the on the, the protocol and security guarantees, not not trust. And why is that? Because there were some reports of incidents, um, like flaw in security or randomness, this kind of thing. So, and or just like cheating. So, what about the other protocols? I mean, the previous ones. Uh, as I said, we, it, we need like more strong, the stronger security guarantees and models for that, and we, we, we don't see that in the, in the old protocols. And another problem that I didn't mention is that, uh, for example, uh, b before the advent of the, the blockchain, uh, uh, the mental poker was just uh, a game. So what, what do I mean by that is that uh, for example, you, there is no stake. You, know, you just play along, and if you don't like it, you just stop it, and you don't lose anything. There is no, it's just a, like, you, you're just kidding. But when you, you, you play along with the blockchain, then you have some financial consequences of your playing, so things get more serious. So, so then we have the, our two protocols, and I'll give, um, overview of them here, and then I'll go separately. So the first one is the Kaleidoscope. It's basically, it's a, a protocol only for poker. And it is, and here I would like to, to thank Agueras, because I just, I'll just skip the terminology, but he ha, you, you had already introduced what a simulation-based security in the previous one. So I'm, I, I will skip it. Like we didn't plan it, but yeah, thank you. <laughs> And so it's, the security is, is, has a strong uh, guarantee than the previous one because it's a simulation-based uh, proof of security. And like recalling the, the other, the, the Zimbowski work, we also rely on rewards and penalties. So why is that? Because we don't, we want that when you're playing and for example, you, you receive your cards and it's not a good card and it's not a good hand, you will think twice to just leave the game because you have, you'll, you'll have consequences if you do that. So, and then, so this is Kaleidoscope. Uh, and then we have Royale, which we generalize it for, not only for poker. Uh, there's a few more um, good things, qualities, properties for, but I will first recapitulate the Kaleidoscope. So, one more thing is that we, it's a simulation-based security which requires a strong definition of what is a secure game. And this work, in comparison to the other uh, the literature, is that we introduce a secure definition for poker. Uh, again, I'd like to thank Aguilos because he's, he, he starts mentioning functionalities, ideal functionalities, so we, 
technically, we introduced the first ideal functionality for poker. So that's what it means. I'm skipping a lot of details here, but yeah, we, we, we got the first definition for poker. And the, the setbacks is that the kaleidoscope is only for poker. It's tailor-made only for poker. That's why it's uh, fairly efficient in comparison to the others. And here again, another concept that we, I, I was, I'll, I'll just skip, but the details just mentioned, but it was already mentioned in the previous uh, talk, which it's, uh, it's not universally composable. Because uh, what it means is that uh, the, the protocol for poker actually is a set of sub-protocols. So you have, you have this protocol to shuffle the cards and then the game starts. You have to, to have this uh, pro sub-protocol to open the cards and make the bets. So actually it's several steps and sub-protocols. I'm calling it sub-protocols. And since we have this mono monolithic definition for poker, we don't foresee how to compose them. Like it has a like straightforward order because of the definition. So we do not address the composition of it and the combination of, of, of them, except for the one that described in the definition. So this is a limitation. Well, in the meanwhile, Royal actually uh, addresses it and it is, uh, uh, it is universally composable. So because it's more general, it's not a, a monolithic definition because it's kind of a modular because it has to be general for se several card games. So we, we need it to be universally composable. So this is the, the difference between them. And the, the similarity is that they, are, uh, they can be officially deployed, implemented. Okay, yes. So it sounds like Royale is just better than Kaleidoscope. Why would I care about Kaleidoscope at all? <laughs> because we did it first. <laughs> Actually, the idea of the Royale so came... Is, I don't care about Kaleidoscope. <laughs> I just want to learn uh, about Royale. Uh, okay, yeah. I will, we'll get into that. Actually, they are very similar. They are very similar. In, in, in the end, uh, uh, we realized that we could do better using a lot of the, the bases for the Kaleidoscope. But uh, we'll get that, that. But yeah, you were right. We can go directly for, for, for the, we can go direct for the Royale, but we did it first, the Kaleidoscope. Yeah, I think the answer would be maybe to learn Royale, you can start the Kaleidoscope as a... Ah, so it's Royale, we did make my brain explode, <laughs> and Kaleidoscope won't. I, I won't actually make a statement, <laughs> <laughs> but it's going to be easy to study. As, you know, poker is something that is very specific. We, we, with the modeling is easier for the kaleidoscope because it's, I mean, the rules are very well defined. It's not general. It's, you have this advantage. If you go to the proofs and the definitions, it's more straightforward. Oh, I also have a related question. So the Marlowe work is looking at exactly this kind of application area, but what they've used as a trial pro, um, problem, because it's a bit simpler, is not um, mental poker, but mental rock, paper, scissors. Oh. And the question is, if you look at mental rock, paper, scissors, does that leave out anything important that mental poker includes? Mm, I think, it, well, I didn't think about, but it seems easier, I mean, for the uh, junk and in Japanese, uh, mental uh, rock, paper, scissors, right? Because you have just to, to, to commit to something and then open it later, right? Yeah. So it, it's, it seems much simpler, actually, than... What's the additional because you have to, to shuffle cards, for example. You have a lot of cards, mm -hmm. and you have to shuffle them. And, and you have multiplayers as well. We, we'll get into, into that later, actually. But, uh, and also, uh, uh, sorry, I'm making confusion, because in Japanese, it's Junkenpo, the name of the game. So it always comes into my mind. But you, have, you play just two people, right? And, and yeah. it just, so in turns. In, 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 in poker, well, you, have, you can bet then. Uh, also, but in, in the poker, you have like, several peoples, and you have like cards, and have the, uh, in the case of the Texas holding version of it, the cards are in the community cards, are in, in, you have to open it, and, and you have to do it jointly because you cannot open like arbitrarily because you can cheat then. And also, uh, you don't, it's, it's different from the consensus thing because 
there, you don't have this half of the people to trust. Actually, you cannot trust anybody in the case of mental poker. So there is this, this, this differences that I remember now. Okay, right, that's really helpful. I think, once we've done rock, paper, scissors, we must do poker also. Oh, okay, okay. Well, I guess Bernardo has something to say about it? Well, additionally, there's a very important difference between poker and rock, paper, scissors. Uh, not only poker, but many card games, in that you need to prove that you won, but you don't want to reveal your strategy. So the way you represent cards and you prove that you have one or more specific cards without revealing your other cards is a significant complication in relation to rock, paper, scissors, where basically you reveal all your randomness by the end of the protocol. Because uh, we think like lotteries and rock, paper, scissors, you just have the problem of sampling some randomness, doing something with it, and then revealing the whole thing. In card games, you don't reveal all your randomness, only parts of it. You need to prove that it's consistent. So that's a very important complication that brings the, I mean, it, 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 we, we need to use many different techniques to actually deal with this that, than just for something where you need commitments only. So that would be a, a fundamental difference between both. Okay, that's useful to know. Uh, and, and, and another card game that we are looking into, which is, uh, it's, it seems to be much simpler than poker, is blackjack. And it's more, uh, maybe more uh, close related to, to lottery and, and just renate randoms and and actually, this is about the strategy. There is some, some like, previous protocols, which in the end of the game, you're supposed to reveal your, your randomness um, you used. And that actually is a bad thing, because as he said, you reveal, because in the, in the real poker, sometimes you want and you don't want to open your cards, right? Because you don't want to like, show them that you're bluffing or not. And so people can like, start reading your face or something. So and there was a problem. In some, some of them, I don't recall which one, but in the end, that in order to, to, to make sure that everybody played fairly, you have to open it, then you will end up revealing. So it's not exactly a good thing. And we don't have this problem in here. So, so your, um, your model does not include convey tells. Convey tells? What do you mean? Showing what my face looks like as I'm betting. Uh, yeah, no, you don't need to. <laughs> OK. Uh, so, well, this is uh, the, an, an overview of them. So now it's time for a crash course. And I don't know if everybody is aware of it. And there's several details that I'm skipping here and don't remember it actually myself. But th this is the, the kaleidoscope is based for the Texas Holden version. I think there are several of them. I, they, they differ in the number of cards, and I think you can adjust it. So. You have this dealer, which is one of the players. They, they rotate in the table. They shuffle the cards. Then each player receives two cards. And then the, the now maybe it's the, the order is a little bit different, but uh, the next two people to the dealer, they'll make like blind bets. They will, they, usually they, are, they, they differ by half of the value. Uh, which they'll put the money in the table. And then the, the dealer will put like three cards in the table, like they are open, so everybody sees it. And then the, all the players start doing action, their actions accordingly in order. So they can like, increase the bet or do nothing, or just come like redraw and they're out of the, the hand. The idea is that every round, everybody who's continue playing put the same amount of money in, in the pot. And after we set this round, uh, the dealer will up an, ex, an, an extra card, up to five. So after all these rounds and five cards are on the table, if there is one player, it, it, he, she will won. But if not, they will show down and compare the results. Is that is that everything okay so far? It's basically that is the rule. If everything is okay, then congratulations, we are expert poker players, and we are ready to go for the kaleidoscope. Okay, so first of all, 
some, something that sometimes, some, some, some question that sometimes shows up is that where the name comes from, it is actually from a movie from the 60s, and it's a movie about poker. There's this guy, uh, like he, I think the actor is the Warren Beatty. He kind of go to the factory of the, all the, the cards in the city, uh, Monaco, I don't know, don't remember the city, and the, he like marks the mattress, the metal one, that, the machine that make the cards, so he can, after that, he can, all the casinos in the city, he can read the cards from the back. So that's the plot of the movie, and I will not tell the rest of it. So the idea here for the kaleidoscope is that on each of those rounds that I mentioned in the last slide is that uh, all the, 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 the players, they generate witnesses, proofs of what they did. So they will work as checkpoints for the game. And in the beginning, also uh, in, in, in relation to the, to the Zimboski uh, at all paper, the, the players are supposed to put the money in the beginning as a collateral. So this is the guarantee that they will behave. Because if they don't, they will lose this, this amount of money. Uh, the disputes, and in the end, is actually, we, this is the, the first, when they start with the money is the interaction with the blockchain, and then uh, they don't need, if everything goes well, they don't need to interact with the, with the chain, unless there is a problem. So if there is a problem, they can go back to the chain and resolve the dispute via a smart contract. So as I said, each action, drawing a card, uh, shuffling, uh, is what I say here, mention here, is like as a sub-protocol of the kaleidoscope. So what I mean by that is that, for example, when you need to turn a card, you need to, to interact with everybody else to, to, to help open the card. OK, so here is, uh, I will try to just give an overview of the building blocks, the crypto building blocks of the protocol. One is the, the Elgamal threshold encryption. Uh, and this is what I was saying in the beginning, that I was a little bit in dilemma, how, how deep I should. I first put this straightforward from the paper, the definition, and I think it's a little bit dry to, to do it. So I will just give an, uh, an, uh, description, uh, like overview description, brief description of it. So here it is. So we have this <coughs> players, they have the, the secret key and they, and this public information, H1, here's the public information and the secret keys. They will just, uh, release those H values and a proof of knowledge that they do know the value uh, which generates the H values. It's basically a G like, uh, to the secret key. So this guarantees that they do know the value. Okay, so the public key actually is generated by multiplying all the H values. And then if you want to encrypt a message which will be used for each card, uh, you you get a message, you use the public key, and some fresh randomness. The, so, okay, so how you decrypt the message? You will compute some shared information from this part of the ciphertext using your secret key, which everybody has. And you also uh, provide, every player provide, a uh, proof of equality of the discrete log, which means that you are like proving that this exponent is the same of these two exponents without revealing it. That's the important part. So, so you can decrypt it. So this will be equivalent later to open the card. Uh, one nice feature of this, this scheme is that you can re-randomize the card. This is also crucial. So with uh, fresh randomness R prime, you just reshuffle it. 
Okay, so that was the, the Elgamal threshold scheme. Here is uh, also a, a an important block, which is from Bayer and Grove from Eurocrypt 2012. So uh, this is actually is how, how we sh do the shuffle of the cards. So for example, a deck of card will be represented by like, a set of ciphertexts, uh, 52 cards. And then this is actually uh, seems a simple problem, but there are some details that you have to take a closer look because simply you just need to shuffle, right? Change the positions. But uh, you choose a permutation, you just do the, 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 the permutation, you execute it. But the problem is you have to also, as I mentioned, that re-randomize it because otherwise you'll just compare and you guess the permutation, right? So you have to re-randomize and change the positions. But it, that's, that's actually not enough because if you are a cheater, you could include some bad values, and since it's randomized, nobody will, will see it, you spot it. So that's why we need this machinery to, to do it properly. So we need to, to, everybody who is shuffling the card needs to provide this proof of correctness of shuffle. So that's why we need it. Seems a, a simple problem, but actually it's kind of a, a technical. We need to, to get, give these guarantees that you are doing it properly, otherwise you'll just mess up the game and nobody will spot it who, who did it. So how, how is the shuffle for, for this, using this uh, tool? So we have the people. Uh, the first one will do the shuffling and provide, this is the, the proof of correctness that I mean from here. So, and then it, it will shuffle it, give this proof and then Broadcast it for the others. The others, the second one will receive the shuffling, for example, the, the first one here, and then do its own part of the shuffling. So it will do it again, and again until the end. So everybody has to do its own shuffling, so that each one of them will be assured that it's done properly. So basically, that is the shuffling part. So uh, another part which is important is that we have to guarantee that nobody will, uh, like for example, leave the game. So as I mentioned before, the idea is that you put your money as a collateral. So you have this contract in the beginning, so all the players, all the, all the people who want to play, they'll put some coins in it, uh, the, the contract describes the checkpoints required for the game to progress. And then as the game goes along, or, or you, you, you'll keep the, the, the people will keep those, those witnesses and checkpoints, and if needed, they will use it to resolve a dispute, or in the, in the end, or when people are leaving, they will show it that the game was done properly, and they will receive their coins, and, with the, a new balance because some people won, some people uh, lose, and so, so it's done by the, the contract. Okay, so, so here is just an overview of the, the, the sub-protocols. So we have this check-in, check-out, which will require the, the contract. Then we have the hand execution, which is basically the game itself, which will shuffle the decks. Uh, place blinds, uh, uh, draw a private card, or open the community cards, and it will require the other two blocks that I mentioned. Here is where they are used. And, and in the end, the, the pot distribution, I mean the re rearrange of the balance, and an eventual recovery phase also requires the, the, the contract. So, so far, so good. So this is an outline of the, the whole protocol. I'm not getting to each one of them. It's just the, the overview. Um, there is a, a whiteboard presentation which it, uh, is available in the, our YouTube channel. Bernardo gave it in, in our office. It's available in our internal YouTube channel, so if you want to 
take a look, please do so. So this is for, for the kaleidoscope. The, then we can go to the royal. Okay, again, a very important piece of information. Uh, maybe that's easier to, to know. Spot is that where the name came from is from the James Bond book and movie. It's Cassino Royale. I hope the colors are good. And it's, uh, what's the difference is that it does not, the, the secret definition is not monolithic for poker. So it's, it gives like more general uh, actions, card actions. So, and so for example, the, the, because in poker we have this open the, the fourth community card which has a specific name and, 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 and also you don't need to, to shuffle your own card because you know, for example, one, one, one thing that in poker you don't do it, but some other game, a card game you, 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 you would do it is pass cards between players. So if you do it, uh, for example, you have to reshuffle your own cards. Otherwise, people with spot can track down where the card is if you pass another time. So you have to receive and reshuffle. You don't have that in poker, for example. So here we, we, we need this kind of operation. This is one example. Uh, the design is more modularized. So for example, the, the rules of the game is embedded in the kaleidoscope, in the definition. Here, no, because it's more general. So we have to set apart uh, the rule because we don't know actually which game is gonna be played. And maybe the, the feature that sets Royale apart is that it's universally composable, secure. As I mentioned, because we don't know the order, we don't know how many instances, so we, we, we need that. So that's basically, I think, sets the, the, the differences from the kaleidoscope. So what are the building blocks? That's your first question. They are similar. So, where, so okay, so what is, what is the trick, right? Uh, that the proof definition, proof technique is different because um, Bernardo and Rafael, they noticed that if we generate the values in the beginning differently, we are able, this is a technicality of the proof, the, the simulation-based proof, you have to construct the simulator. And if we, don't, we do it differently from the beginning, we are able to construct a, simula a better simulation for, for our proof. So that's, that's why it's, we, is, we are able to prove. Bernardo, I think he has something to say. So there's, a, there's another main uh, difference in the proof technique is that we realize, for those people who are familiar with zero knowledge proofs, we realize that we don't need to extract the witnesses. We only need to generate uh, zero knowledge proofs using this, the simulator of the NIST that we're actually using. So that allows us to get rid of rewinding in the simulation, and that helps us, of course, construct a UC proof, just to make it clear. If you have a proof, you, you cannot like, rewind this algorithm, and if you can, like, extract it without it, then it will become UC compatible. That's the main trick. That's, that's why. So in the, in the implementation, who's, who's going to produce the CRS, the common reference stage? I don't know. Uh, uh, actually, we're, we're, we're talking with Vincent about the implementation, but I don't, I'm not sure. Bernard, do, do you? Well, we just generate the CRS for the proof of uh, correctness of shuffles is basically the parameters of a Peterson commitment. So it's a bunch of random uh, group elements such that you don't know the discrete log of one in relation to the other. So that's very easily, easily generated by, by basically coin tossing, which we can implement very cheaply in the random Markle model. So we do a setup phase where, where these parameters are generated and then it can be used for a number of executions, of course. It's part of the check-in, and the parties playing the game will be doing it. Okay. okay, so as I mentioned, I mean, they are, the building blocks are similar, but the, the, the sub-protocols are like, different because we have to be more general, but we do have the check-in, check-out phase. 
uh, have to create cards uh, with a specific value. So if you want to do it, uh, and we have it, and, and Kaleidoscope is not needed. Uh, when it's open, uh, you can open a private card. So you can you have a card at your in your hand. You can uh, open it, uh, or a public card, some card which is covered in the table. Then you have you want to open it. You also can do it. That that it's not needed actually in poker, for example, because the, the community cards are open in the table. So this is an example that uh, some kind of generality that we need, but we didn't do. We didn't need it in the kaleidoscope. Uh, for the shuffle, there's also two kinds of it because, as I, I was mentioning, uh, in poker you don't need to shuffle your own cards, but in some other game that you passes the card to us between the players. You, you might need it, so we have to, to, to build this uh, protocol. Uh, here, execute actions is like uh, open the card, uh, like put bets, this kind of thing. The compensation is when you, you, you in the end of the game, it is, uh, you, you have to, to know if you win or if you lose, so if you're gonna uh, receive money or more money or lose money. And of course, the recovery, which is um, if something goes wrong, you have to go to this state of recovery and go to the blockchain and check if everything is okay. Okay, so this is the paper. I think we released a, a old version in, in, in our internal Slack. Uh, we are working to, to openly distribute it, in, but it's not quite done yet. I think we, well, the paper is mostly done, but just some one or two paragraphs we need to rewrite, and that's it. Okay, so here are the publications. Um, as it was already mentioned, the Kaleidoscope is going to be presented in financial cryptography in 2010, but it's available in the ePrint uh, for quite a long time already. And in Royale, we are working to release a, a version for the ePrint and in the uh, IOHK website library section. Uh, we have been promoting these protocols. Uh, Bernard, it's not very good to see it, unfortunately. But believe me, this is a RAMP session presentation in Asia Crypt last month. Bernardo gave a small talk. Shamir was in the front line, and it was nice <laughs> to see his reaction. And so it was in December, and next week uh, I'll be like, making again this more or less different presentation in Niigata, Japan. So, yeah, I guess that's, that's it. I hope you guys had a good idea of what, what Kaleidoscope and Royale mean. And stay tuned. Maybe we have some other things to present in the future.